E I O U. Oh, okay, we're doing pretty well actually here. Uh, U something I something O L R. Okay, we're we're failing on purpose now. Oh my goodness, it's a. In this video, we make Hangman in Python, where the computer picks the words. <laughs> but before we immediately jump into the code, I want to go over two quick things. Number one, what is Hangman and how is it played? Number two, what code do we need to make Hangman? Knowing both of these things before you start is important when programming something. You should always know what it is you're trying to achieve. In this case, make Hangman. Then, once you have that figured out, how you plan to achieve it by breaking it down into smaller tasks. So, let's quickly go over Hangman. Feel free to skip ahead if you are a Hangman expert. Hangman is a game that is normally played with pen and paper. It is a head-to-head -head game where one player chooses a word or a phrase. They then draw a Hangman platform and then draw an underscore for each letter in the phrase or word. For example, if the word was subscribe, it would look like this. The second player has to guess letters that could be in the secret word or phrase that the first player has chosen, or any correct guess results in the letter being written in place. So if they guess S, the S's are filled in. Or if the user guesses a letter that is not included, like O, a part of a sick person is drawn. If the second player gets six incorrect guesses, then the sick person is complete and the second player loses. If the second player fills in all the blanks before being hung, <laughs> then they win. Now, we know how Hangman is played. Next, we need to figure out what we will need to code and how we can break it down into smaller tasks. So number one, we need a way to get words. A game of Hangman without words, pretty boring. We already did that in the last video, link in the description for that. Number two, we need a way to print the state of the Hangman platform. I'm just gonna call it platform or basically how to draw the hangman. Number three, we need a way to allow a player to input guesses and track whatever they've guessed. Number four, we need a way to print out the secret word, including filled in characters for the player's guesses. Finally, number five, game logic. Basically, did we win or lose yet? Okay, so let's start out with number two since number one is done already. For this, we will need to create a function that will take in an input for the number of wrong guesses so we know what kind of platform and stick person to print. To start out, we'll make a simple platform. Good enough. Then we will need to figure out how to draw the head. So we want the head to be below the line. So if wrong guesses is greater than or equal to one, then we will print the head. Otherwise, we will print the normal line. So let's set this to one. Perfect. Now we have the head printing. Let's do the same for the body now. Perfect, but what we might notice here is that we also need to put the arms here as well. So let's do that now. Great, let's try it now. There's two, there's three, there's four. Now we just need to do the same for the legs. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, we need to move this over by one. Same with this one. Okay, and six. All right, I think that's good enough. And let's also say you lose. Not loser, you loser, it's even more mean. Great, we now have a functioning platform printer that changes depending on the guess count. Task number two is complete. Let's now program how a player can guess. This one we have gone over a number of times. We can just use the input function. 
We went over this more in this video here. Let's put this in a while loop and we can just say, guess a letter. But right now we aren't doing anything with this input. So let's put the character that the player chooses in a set. You can call it guesses equals set. Guesses dot add guess. But we don't really want the player to be able to just keep guessing the same letter here. So instead, let's check if guess is in guesses, then we will print you have already guessed that letter. Please try again. And then we will use continue, which will retry the loop. And there we go. We're all set there. And then let's just to test this out, we can print out guesses and see if this works. Guess a letter, A. Okay, we've got A, if we do A again, we've already guessed that. But if we do O, okay, O again, we've already guessed that. Great, number three is done and working. Check. Now, on to number four. We need to print out the secret word where each letter not guessed so far is just an underscore. So let's start by creating a function called print word. And it will take in the word and the guesses from number three. Let's start by figuring out how to print just the underscores for a given word, basically the start of the game. To do this, we want to create a string of underscores, like underscore, 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 if it's test, for example. So one way we can do this is just have a single underscore and multiply it by the length of the word. Now, if we print out the secret, we can call print word and pass in test and guesses and give it a run. Perfect. While this is good, we want to be able to change parts of the word when the player guesses right. But we can't do that because strings are immutable. So instead, let's make a list of underscores rather than just an entire string. Perfect. Now, we can change the underscores because lists are mutable. Now, let's loop over the word, keeping track of the index. And if the letter of the word is found in guesses, we set the letter to that position in the list. So that can look something like this. If letter in guesses, then secret index equals letter. Then we're just going to add one to the index. Then we just have to reset the secret to be a string. We can do that by saying secret equals empty string dot join and then pass in the secret. The reason this will work is because it converts a list into a string. And then we can print secret. So let's give this a try. If we print the word now, we still get empty. But now let's pass in T into a set and see what happens. There we go. We get the first T and the last T being printed. Perfect. Job done. Number four is all good to go. Now, the final part of the game. Task number five, game logic. Well, we need a way to win the game and a way to lose the game. To do this, we'll make our loop continue while we have less than five wrong guesses. So let's track our wrong guesses. And then let's say while well, wrong guesses is less than or equal to five. Let's also update our print word to also return whether or not we won the game. So let's instead having it say print word, we can say print and did win. And then here we can just return whether the underscore is not in secret because if there are no underscores left in the secret, then that means we have, we have picked the entire word. Now let's uncomment our logic up here to get a word that we want to choose here. So just to make things easier, let's just get rid of the choice for now and we can get rid of all of this and just make it always be a animal for now. Okay, and then we will get the response and we will say that the word is equal to response to JSON 
and we need to import requests. Okay, perfect. Now each time we run this, we're gonna have a word. Now we can say if guess is in the word, then we will print out you got one. Else we'll print out wrong. We'll say wrong guess. And then we will increase the number of wrong guesses by one. Now we're going to create one more function called print state and it's going to be responsible for printing out everything we want. So we're going to print hangman and we will include the number of wrong guesses here. We will then see if we won by calling print and did win and we will pass in the word and the guesses. Then finally, we will, we will print out the guest letters because it's good to know which letters you have guessed so you don't keep guessing the same ones. I know that's a problem for me. And we can just put all these together like that. And then finally, we'll print out just an empty string just to space things out and return did win. Perfect, so now when we call this, we're gonna print out the current state of the game. We're gonna print out the secret. We will print out the letters that you've already guessed. And then we're gonna return whether or not we've won. So now down here, we can just say did win equals print state. And then if did win, we're going to break. And we can say if wrong guesses is less than or equal to five, print you won else print you lost. Now we need to add one more thing before we start guessing and that is print state. So we wanna print the empty state so the player knows how many letters the word might have. Let's give it a go. Okay, we have no guess letters. I, it says guesses letters, which is not right, but that's okay. So guess a letter, let's guess A. Okay, A is not in it. So we've we've uh, failed so far, let's guess I. I is also not in it, there's no vowels in this. Okay, O is in it, excellent. Um, let's guess L, okay. Uh, uh, e, okay, we got an E, this is an, an animal of some kind. Um, P, okay, no. Uh, M. Oh no. Uh, uh, R. Rural. Rural. D? No? Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, come on, Jake. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. And, ah. Dang it. Okay, so, so far we've not, we're not very good at this, that's fine. But another thing we realize now is we don't actually know what the actual answer is. So when we print out that you've lost, we can print out uh, the answer was, or the secret was, and then print out the word. That way when we fail, let's try again real quick. Let's go A, E, I, O, U, Oh, okay, we're doing pretty well actually here. Uh, U something I something O. L, R. Okay, we're we're failing on purpose now. Oh my goodness, it's a unicorn! It's a unicorn! Heck yeah! Okay, sorry, that was pretty exciting. Uh, okay, great. Well, we know that we've won now, and we know it was a unicorn. Um, let's let's try this again. Uh. Okay. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm so much better when I'm not trying. Okay, there we go. So we can see that it was a clearly a, a coup, a coup, coup prey. All right. Totally know what that one is. Awesome. Okay, great. So now this works. Now, the one thing that we can do to make our game a little bit more fun is we can ask the player what type of a thing they'd like to choose and we can make that a little bit better here. So that way we can get rid of this and we can have it change between an a noun, an animal, or an, uh, an adjective. But that's it! We programmed Hangman in Python. Making this, we also went over 
A pretty good way of tackling a project. First, we figured out what we wanted to make, or at least a general idea. Then we broke it down into smaller parts and started implementing it. So this is the end of the Python series. I really hope you enjoyed it. The next thing we're gonna tackle is data structures and algorithms. That might sound intense. It's like we're a crazy hacker man or something, but it's great to know the ways you can organize data and solve problems. Many of the complex problems you'll run into when programming can actually be solved by one of the algorithms or data structures that we'll go over. As always, thanks for watching. Hit like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, leave a comment about anything, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.